Yeah, hello, welcome to this broadcast. I hope I'm really live. Yep, <laughs> the usual question that I have to pose every broadcast, am I really live? There are a couple of guys in chat, so probably someone will tell me. Yeah, even during the scene for a cup, we are live for some blitz action and also some cues and A's, hopefully. Yeah, I try to answer your questions. In one of the future shows, I will actually do a question and answer show only. Yeah, not playing, but just yeah, addressing your questions. This will be something that will be announced separately. But this time we're going to play a couple of games. Oh, that's a cool one, playing Psycho Cowboy live. That's cool. That's Simon Williams. Yeah, you probably know him. He also has a... Ah, he's playing H4. <laughs> he has a YouTube channel as well. Huh? Okay, I'm stopping that pawn. Um, he has a YouTube channel as well and many uh, things published on chess. He got a good book out huh? on the... On the um, on the Dutch, yeah? the killer Dutch. Interesting book. Okay, so what is he up to? I think I'm just developing normally. Playing classical playing classical chess. So what is his point there? Hmm. I mean I try to get this H5 pawn, right? Is that possible to get that pawn? Okay, I'm going back here. I cannot take because before was hanging. Ah, okay. That's interesting. So he doesn't want to castle short in this game. <clears throat> I mean, okay, objectively what he's doing here is of course complete rubbish, but it's uh, it's blitz chess. You can try all kinds of funky stuff, and um, it's not so <clears throat> so um, easy to refute. So what is this knight to h two? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Many things possible here. Can even go g five, but um, that looks a bit strange. Taking on d5, I don't know, is possible. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's a simple, a simple solution to this. It's probably not ideal, but it still looks fairly, fairly good. Um, someone is asking about the Manhattan Gambit versus the Dutch. Um, um, I don't even know what the Manhattan Gambit is. So if you give me the concrete moves, um, I can think about it. However, if I don't even know the name of the opening, um, <laughs> usually this is not um, not a sign for, for, for quality, let's say, as I'm normally pretty well versed in, in opening names. Okay, so knight f5, I'm attacking this, um, this rook. And I've got knight d4. I mean, what, what exactly is he doing here? Okay, I can take h5 now. I mean, it, it's just a pawn, but I can still take it. Huh. Okay, I'm taking this. I'm a, I'm a materialist at heart. Not really, but if they give me a pawn, I will. g4, I go knight h4. So I'm going here. Someone asked, when and why did you choose to go into chess professionally? It is such a niche career. Why not go into some more traditional profession? Yeah, I did some more traditional profession for um, 18 years, working in um, IT controlling in a, in a, in a, in a corporate bank. Um, it was totally okay. I don't, um, don't really um, um, regret doing that. And um, it was, was a good job. But however, um, at one point, this, this thing, this um, a bank was essentially closing down and uh, they step by step got rid of everybody. <laughs> and uh, I was one of them. Uh, so it was clear that this was not um, going to continue. And um, yeah, I was thinking, uh, do the same thing again or 
um, do something else and I felt that um, trying it out with chess would be would be interesting so and I didn't uh, didn't really um, regret it one minute so it's um, it's been a good a good choice so I'm going to play f5 here gaining the space and uh, queen out I'm going for long castling that uh, just makes some sense I can take e3 here and then castle long it's probably the easiest don't really see any great compensation my king is safe I always have knight c5 like king b8 knight c5 I hope that um, Levon Aronian is back yeah I really hope he's such a great player and uh, seeing him suffer for such a long time wasn't wasn't nice and now it seems that he's um, yeah getting getting back into shape um, no I'm not considering going back to to a bank job it's uh, I mean quite quite clearly you can earn more money in that uh, in in banking than than with chess but it's not really um it's not really that interesting when you have that that alternative okay what is he doing i cannot take i can go rook f8 so we are playing an end game with me being tons of stuff up that's not bad let's take with the rook i'm a bit down on time that's the only thing that is a bit worrisome maybe taking with the knight would have been better actually but okay that's it's not it cannot be bad here um i cannot take on e3 unfortunately but it is close mm -hmm. I wonder if h5 is a move. h5, he takes it, I take f2. Well, that's probably good. Let's do it. Let's push those pawns. Um... So um, this one, hmm, that's a good one. I can still go g4, right? Yeah, let's do that. Um, why did Nakamura play such a BS opening yesterday? I don't think it was BS. It was just not promising very much, especially against Aronian, who's such a specialist in that in that kind of structure. It was probably not a great idea, but it's not bullshit, of course. Um, That's a question. Can I play the Karo Khan at once? Um, sure. Um, uh, let's let's do that. Come on, let's play <clears throat> aggressively here. Enforce that issue. I can take F two, right? Let's, let's do this. And now maybe the other rook to f2. I can take that. He had too much red wine, I guess. Just a wild guess, but it could be could be the the right explanation for this for this game. I can still screw that up. I'm pretty good at that. No, he resigned. Yeah, that was a bit a bit too much of creativity, maybe. Okay, let's go for the next game. Mm. Can I play the Karo Khan? Yeah, sure, I can try. If they go 1e4 against me, I will play the Karo Khan. Um, by the way, what do you think about, I mean, um, the... Um, the 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 thing with the green screen, yeah, that I'm melted right into the screen, is something that we recently changed, and I understand that not everybody loves that. But I think um, I changed the light lighting in my room. I switched to LED lights, and I think it looks a bit better now. By the way, 
if you like you're welcome to to give feedback on that i think it looks a bit better i mean okay maybe i can adjust my position here a little bit mm. so and the manhattan gambit is d4 f5 queen d3 e6 and then g4 Hmm. I don't think that e6 is that great, actually. Yes, my head is less shiny. I switched it to a different light. It was It's a colder light now. I, th I think it's the right way to, to call it. Yes, <clears throat> people like my library in the background, but ICC is going to, um, to do this green screen thing, so I'm going to comply to that. Um, yeah, I, I really switched the lighting because I thought it would help um, improve the, the the quality, and it seems uh, I was right with that. So, um, what is going on here? E4 is hanging. I can just play. Uh, I think I can do that, right? Let's go back here. So yeah, the, 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 this gambit, yeah, d4, f5, queen, d3, e6. Um, why exactly is e6 the move? Um, isn't black able to play, uh, let's say, d6? And the, yeah, knight, two knight f6, this pawn is hanging. So I think um, it should be somehow, there should be some kind of reaction to it. Someone suggested two knight f6. I don't think this is going to work. Um, Okay, so why two d6 maybe that that maybe makes g4 less uh, of a problem, or you can go two d5. You know, of course. What is this here? I wonder. Does black have anything great? I mean, I'm just playing this on autopilot. Do my neighbors wonder why I talk so much? I do, I hope they don't hear it. Would be probably very irritating. Hmm. Yeah. What is he doing here? Isn't that just good for white? This position. It looks really unpleasant. Hmm. Yes. But I thought rookie won now, but or can he take off four? Really. I mean that cannot be great, but it might be. Just about about okay. Hmm. Okay, so I'm taking this. So check first or not. Hmm. It's not clear if that nets me anything, so I'm going bishop f5 first. Yeah, I mean this is this, this, this looks nice, but how do you actually win? Yeah, that was a good move. Mm. Stupid, yeah. That was stupid allowing this. Well, okay, I'm going to offer a draw here. It's just a to totally, totally equal. No, it was stupid. I was pushed this better. Um, that's a question. If I could add a new feature to a chess engine, what would it be? I've been working on Stockfish a bit, and I think human difficulty and the position how deep to calculate can be a good idea to express. Um, I, he actually he agreed to a draw. I can start a new one. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, I think the biggest problem, I'm not sure if it's the biggest problem, but one deficit that engines definitely still have is that they have absolutely no grasp of the concept of a fortress. And uh, it would be fantastic if they would, uh, I mean, would, I don't know. I think it's actually good that humans have some kind of thing um, 
that they do better than the computer. But uh, from a purely um, artificial intelligence point of view, um, it would be interesting to, to teach the computer how to uh, think in terms of uh, fortresses. Um, there's a question. Did I start liking Blitz again? I started to post free videos daily again. It's not that I disliked it. Um, one thing is that um, I was really, really busy the last uh, couple of uh, weeks and uh, now this is much better. I'm um, much better um, organized now and uh, have more time so I can um, I can do the three Blitz videos again. The thing is what I wanted to do is I didn't want to um, give the impression that I'm somewhat it is my duty to always do the three games. I will rather put the emphasis on doing one serious let's say video per day with some instructional content and then I'll do one to three blitz videos if I like I do three yeah if I don't uh, really have the time I'll just do one game it's always be there will always be at least one game and I don't get a new game here by the way it's not that I just want to chat chat away yeah I don't get a new game <clears throat> there's a question what do I think about Vai Yi's game of the decade did he actually calculate it um no course not. Uh, he just uh, he saw that with rook f7 he has a draw in hand and um, this is why he played it and it kind of it strings together. Nobody calculates that far. Absolutely really nobody. So um, I, I like that game but um, I don't really uh, think it is such some something so extraordinary. And by the way many strong players agree with, agree with that. I talked to a bit to a number of players that I know and um, Actually, nobody thought it was such an exceptional game. I mean, certainly nice, but um, nothing really out of the ordinary. Okay, I'm playing Numantino. Is there... No, uh, not, not out of the ordinary. That sounds wrong. But, well, this, uh, this game of the decade and game of the something is a very um, sensationalist way of... Um, Talking about chess games, and um, it's it, it's 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 good. It's it's great. Everything's cool. But does it have to be the game of something all the time? And the, the main thing was that uh, he he flushed the king out, and uh, it was uh, was 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 okay. But um, I really think um, it was not nothing that um, that um, out out of the ordinary. Okay, so what is this here? Um, okay, he's so playing rookie one. I'm playing a grandmaster here, by the way. Not a high rated one, but okay. What does he? What does he want to do? Maybe just really e5, huh? Okay. The game worstly so with the Ronian that was nice. Yes. Hmm? But also, I mean, not not a game of the decade or anything. So what is this? Just just play normal stuff here. Rook d8. Hmm. Anything that I can do here from a tactical point of view? It uh, looks a little bit like there might be something. Okay, let's play normal move for e6. Hmm. Yeah, that's rather boring. He's really playing <laughs> to to trade off the the whole board. Probably that's right, though. I mean, he doesn't have anything, anything uh, fancy going for him anyway. Maybe we'll trade both bishops here, yeah? and uh, probably something on the d file.
Tja, not much going on here. Yeah, someone suggests maybe this guy's Ole Gas in disguise. I don't think so. For the GM title to, to appear here on ICC, you really have to uh, send in your ID. And uh, I blundered rookie six here, or what? No, I didn't. Okay. Couldn't go rook d8 because of queen d8. So we get an end game now with me having the d-file, which is not decisive, <laughs> but he, he didn't play it particularly well. He didn't need to give me that, but um, again, it's it's really nothing going on. Hmm. Hmm. King g4 would be cute. Running into <laughs> running into mate. Uh huh. Okay. So he allows this. Hmm. What is this king and pawn end game? F six, then e five. Hmm. Go to f5, king there, f6, got b4, it's probably still a draw. Yeah, it's still a draw. Not much to do. Arun and Arnold ended in a draw, someone says. Okay. And Topolov so as well. Yeah, Topolov and so probably don't like their tournament at the moment that much, so it could be an explanation. Yeah, this, this is still very, very equal <laughs> in this position, but um, we're still trying, trying for something. <laughs> Karls Nakamura is today, okay. Someone says uh, Carlson has already outplayed him like he usually does. I'm not sure that I would call it like that. I mean, Carlson normally wins, but <laughs> outplay, I'm not so sure. Nakamura has uh, gotten some very nice positions in the past against uh, Carlson. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that is so clever what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to continue that game. Wow. Okay. We will definitely have something happening. Yeah, that, that's not ending in a draw that that easily. Uh, maybe it is. Huh? If he goes king c3 now, it's difficult to deviate. Rook a4, or is that crazy? I guess he has queen b, uh, king b3. It doesn't really make much sense. Um, I probably have to do that draw. Or can I go <clears throat> to somewhere else? a1. Okay, I'm trying, but I have my doubts that this is objectively good.
for rook d7. Oh no, uh, it, now he enters there. Nah, that's not good. Nah. Hmm, okay. Nah, c5 now. Ah, awful. Nah, I, did, I really misplayed that. Rather, rather terribly. I really should have just just taken that draw. Yeah, you're always kind of hypnotized by your opponent having a low rating. I really wanted I really wanted to continue, but I should have taken that draw. That was stupid. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, awful. Yeah, that was a draw the whole the whole time actually. Okay, so next game. Yeah, I already requested a new game. Are there any any additional questions maybe? Is the Leningrad playable in long time controls? Obviously, yes, yeah. It's played quite a bit by um by um by um come on by nakamura by carlsen has played it recently caruana has played it sure dutch uh, leningrad is um very much okay especially seven seven c6 seems to be quite okay i only recently watched uh, something by by peter swidler where he also said that um he thinks the Dutch is totally okay. Playing the Blitz King, so maybe should be quick here. Ah, we're close, close to a Dutch. <laughs> ah, e6, uh, probably e4, e5. Yeah, Swidler has played the Dutch in the Kanti Monzisk Candidates Tournament. Yeah, I'm just playing normal develop and, uh, development moves, not really trying to refute his setup. Not sure that this would be possible anyway, but I'm not an expert here on the on the the sideline here of the Fianchetto Kings Indian. Um, yeah, Karls and Karana didn't have a good result against Wojtaszek with the, <laughs> with the Leningrad Dutch, that's true. Wojtaszek is a very good theor theoretician, however, so that um, might have happened in other openings as well. Um, there's a question, what do I think of Chess Network? I remember I weren't so fond of his choice of opponents. Um, well, well, I mean, everybody has to um, make their decisions on what, what kind of games they they want to play. Um, and um, the thing is that um, I really think that he should um, do the odd dual commentary because it's simply it's a very popular format. People people uh, like it uh, that YouTubers play um, each other, and he's never doing that, which I feel is um, a bit of a shame because he's got a really a good audience and I think people would really like to see those matches um, but he's not uh, not really into that so taking on looking at d4 I don't want to cover it. I can go d5, by the way. 
but then b2 hangs hmm okay <clears throat> Yeah, someone mentioned that <clears throat> chess network suffered a scholars a scholars made in bullet. Yeah, in bullet, uh, I mean, many things can happen. Okay, what is he doing? Don't, don't get it. I mean, maybe that was gone anyway, but. I don't I don't really know. This looks very good for white. Um there's a question about the the line that Topalov played. I can take F5 now, huh? That Topalov played against um, Giri. Um, is this too optimistic to have this line in the main repertoire if you want to win? Yes. The simple answer is yes. It's just this is just too tame. It's very difficult to get um, get anywhere. It's a it's a good line if you want to be super super safe, sound, solid. Yeah. A draw is fine. This this kind of thing. But um, if you want to win, play for a win. This is a bit too too tame. And um, White also has um, tons of good alternatives. Uh, he has checks on a4 at various um, moments, and um, in all of those lines, he has chances for an edge. So at times, I mean, really an edge. And this is why the the end game. Uh, shouldn't be your main choice. You have many good alternatives. The good thing about this endgame line is that um, you really have to be completely, uh, completely uh, out of sorts to to lose. And um, this means that it's a great weapon if you play against someone where a draw is totally fine, and where you want to be on the to on the safe side. Huh? Um, someone says, "Is audio out of sync only for me?" Um, well, I cannot tell you, but um, please uh, let me know if this is a, a problem that uh, others have. Okay, um, well, now I can actually uh, trade down here. Yeah, let's do that. Getting the knight to d3 should be nice. Um, if you have uh, stream buffering and stuff, yeah, do F5 if you are on a Windows computer. Just do a refresh. A refreshing does help. It's sometimes just a matter of Twitch. It's not really a matter of the specific broadcast or something that I can do. It's just that sometimes Twitch has problems, especially with um, certain certain areas of the world because of some some um, connection issues. There's a question. Did I saw the trash talking of Carlson and Nakamura? I think they recorded something for the for the broadcast. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to fix that pawn. Knight will come to d3. And then I'm going to win the, the remaining pawns step by step. King e1, rook d2, yeah, he's preventing that, but now I can bring the king up. Yeah, king f1, and maybe that wasn't so necessary, but this, this knight is just an excellent piece. It completely coordinates my position, covers everything, blocks the d-pawn, 
makes this bishop on h6 looks look rather irrelevant. Yeah, that trash talking between Carlsen and Nakamura. I really, I mean, uh, a world championship match between the two would be excellent, really excellent. I mean, uh, what, how, how, I mean, the, this is one of the most attractive possible matches. Yeah, it would be an American involved, yeah, get many uh, sponsors interested. And Nakamura is an interesting person. I mean, you can say whatever you want about him, but he's definitely interesting. Um, I mean, he's the more um, interesting person to present compared to, to many others, probably. <clears throat> okay, Casa Nueva. That is the new house, right? I'm not good. At, Spanish is not my forte, but <laughs> Casa Nueva sounds like the new house. Um, so we got some open Sicilian. Nope. Is that a new handle, by the way, or let me check? Oh yes, terrible ratings in the other pools. One minute is, is on eighteen hundred. Are you serious? Five minute is high. Blitz is crap. Bullet is total crap. Okay. Um, okay, let's watch that game carefully. There's a question. Why are the players so boring in the after game Q and A? Um, I'm not sure. Are they boring? I mean, okay. One thing that sometimes is underestimated is that um, playing those games is actually rather, um, rather tiring uh, thing to do. Yeah. I mean, they they really, really, really. Um, I get to um, yeah. I have to concentrate very deeply, and um, it can be um, a somewhat tough thing to talk um, eloquently about a game right after you have completed it. I don't think this is um, much of a difference compared to like let's say if you have uh, footballers, yeah, or if we do the American, we have called it soccer players um, or other sportsmen. Um, that uh, that they are interviewed right after they they uh, they leave the playing field. Quite often they are kind of um, completely wrecked, yeah, from that from from the playing. And um, yeah, I think this is uh, also in some in some ways uh, the case for the for the chess guys. You are just tired, and um, in some cases I'm I really wonder how they can actually do um, say something halfway decent after a long game. Yeah, I think this is a somewhat strange game, but I'm not sure that that whole account is a bit strange, but I'm not thinking. Um, I've been playing around with the Owens, Queen's Indian defense uh, against everything in online blitz. Is it playable in classical chess? Um, the b6 based setups um, without, I mean, the Queen's Indian is of course the mainline opening and very much playable. The Owens defense with um, e6, b6 and so on, um, yeah, is it playable? Probably yes. Is it good? Probably no. e4, b6 I think is borderline, borderline incorrect, even though there are, um, there are, uh, DVDs and and stuff uh, on that, but I still think it's borderline incorrect. Um, 
you can however play it um, against c4 c4 b6 is uh, is totally okay i've played that myself for um myself quite a bit yeah. i'm going to report this guy taking seconds on queen h3 and so on this, this is bullshit this is in, in some, some way a cheating account, pretty clearly. It is either are people sharing the account, which is also um, not right by ICC standards, or it's just a plain cheater. Um, I'm doing that right away. Sorry, guys, but this way I'm not forgetting it. Okay. Um, um, there's a question. Kasparov ended his career with a 70% win rate, while Carlsen is on 61%. Why is there such a difference between two players who are both world champions? Does it mean that Kasparov is stronger than Carlsen? Um... No, I wouldn't draw that conclusion. Um, those comparisons are always difficult, however um, difficult. But <clears throat> one thing is um, that nowadays the the nature of tournaments is a bit different. Um, when you um, when you um, look at the uh, tournaments that Kasparov played in the eighties and nineties, um, there were quite a bit of events where he was um, a huge favorite by rating. Yeah, there, there were many local players, things like that. And nowadays, we mostly have those super tournaments, yeah, where um, where we really look at the Singfield Cup. Yeah, now we have now world number one, number two, and so on, and so on. So we only have the, the very, very top players. And um, this is a huge difference. Back then, they had, um, of course, also strong events, but there were more, um, more let's say, second-tier GMs in those events, and Kasparov could score huge scores against those guys. And if we would have more events like that today, um, I think Carlsen also would be able to do that, and also other players. Yeah, some a player like Nakamura, for example, with his with his sharp style, would probably uh, totally crush many of those events that Kasparov had crushed in the 90s. Um, this is comparable to something, let's say, like Gibraltar, those big open tournaments. Um, and uh, this is, I think, the reason why the win rate is higher. I don't think this uh, is in any way indica indicative of, of strength. You can um, cannot compare the uh, players there um, so well anyway. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen recent uh, Sibit's uh, recent 1, 2, 3 video. That was very amusing. And uh, and he's of course I mean it was totally right I mean, the, the guy cheated and he always said one two three move <laughs> that was really funny it was a super obvious cheating I mean the guy that I played um, in the game before that um, at least had an account sharing going on because you don't have two thousand five hundred something in uh, in five minutes and then you have got 1800 in bullet this is just total nonsense out of a couple like 1500 games this is just not happening okie dokie yeah I, I need to protect this here yes but uh, no choice what now knight d5 maybe what is he doing then queen c6 Rook c1 hmm, doesn't look too great. Maybe rook here. I don't know. Um, so there's a question about Latvia. And I, sorry, I don't. Uh, I sometimes cannot see all the question. Um, someone was in Latvia. There's a very beautiful park in Riga with lots of people playing chess, uh, chess boards and clocks. Um, 
Have I seen something like this in Germany? Would I play in a setting like that? Uh, sure, why not? It's certainly entertaining, uh, sitting in the park and playing uh, playing blitz chess. Um, but I don't really know any of this. I mean, I think there there is stuff like that going on. Um, it's, it's quite quite funny. I just uh, one week ago, I actually sold an old chess clock of mine to a person who uh, told me that um, he would that he would um, that he uses the clock or will use the clock to play in a park in Frankfurt. So um, with friends. So that sounds nice. Um, there's a question. So who do you think would win a 12 game match? 20 year old Kasparov or 20 year old Carlsen? <laughs> Impossible to say. But let's think about this for one moment. 25 year old Kasparov would be Kasparov of 1988, right? Yeah, I think Carlsen would win that. Because um, Kasparov actually did um, did improve a bit still after 25 yeah i think kasparov was at his best probably mid 90s and um i mean he was super strong in 1988 yeah don't get me wrong but i think mid 90s was probably his uh, his best his best um period when he also had um i mean the thing is that kasparov um really was helped a lot Helped is the wrong word, maybe, but the the matches against uh, Karpov did um, did um, really, really, really push uh, Kasparov's game to to total to a total new level, and uh, this is actually what I believe um, would help Carlsen quite a bit. He doesn't really have, uh, I mean, he has people who are strong and they are opponents and everything, but he hasn't, he doesn't have an especially super strong challenger and this would uh, totally help him if there's something somebody who's uh, like 2850 and really has it constantly then um, it would be different i mean caruana I mean, they are all very very strong but it's not the same as karpov and kasparov yeah with karpov and kasparov karpov really 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 was almost on kasparov's level it was so close that um, it's just um, a matter of a very, very few games and difference in, in results. Um, my opponent offers me a draw. Okay, nah. Let's see here. I don't really want a draw. Hmm. Yeah, but how do I actually win this game? Okay, this is not very active, but anyway. To cover F1, I guess. How do I win this? It looks nice huh? with that knight there on E4, but not easy, not so easy to play. Queen D5, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, Kasparov is on plus three or something, that's probably true plus three, plus four, something like that. He only has a very, uh, yeah, they played 170 guys, uh, 170, uh, <laughs> 170 um, games. So Kasparov's score um, is really, really not that high against Karpov. Okay, queen d5, that was my idea covering b3 and trying to get to his king someone says i should play yardbird more often um i play him quite often but i think um it might be a matter of time of day yeah when when we when we play we were probably not completely on the same page there okay i was thinking maybe queen d3 could win Queen h5, he really has this bishop d4 move. This is kind of awkward. Hmm, man. <laughs> man, that wasn't so great, huh? I doubt that I can win now. No, anyway, let's try.
has a question. How does it feel to win the Football World Cup? Someone from the Netherlands is asking that. Um, I mean, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I think it was great uh, to see that uh, last year. And uh, it's the kind of thing that, uh, I mean, we really, really do watch... Uh, the, the the matches of our national team with, with some some passion and um it um it's really um it was it's really clear that um the the chances are relatively slim of winning that event yeah you really 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 need luck and um this this pretty much means that the it it won't happen again in in a lifetime that often and i now witness two two of uh, germany's uh, wins in the World Cup. I mean, theoretically speaking, also the one in 1974, but I was like a couple of weeks old, so that um, that doesn't really count. <laughs> but uh, I watched all of 1990 and uh, all of uh, last years, and uh, I agree, I think it actually was well deserved. And there are cases where you think, okay, that, that was uh, kind of lucky or whatever, but I think um, the, the German team really probably was the best team in that event. Yeah, I probably have to concede a draw there for talking too much. Yeah, not probably. <laughs> Will be a draw. Ah yeah, don't talk about 1974. Yes, um, this, is, this is true, I understand. Back then it wasn't that well deserved. The, the Dutch team was, was quite clearly stronger. But having uh, Gerd Müller or not having Gerd Müller is a huge difference. Um, okay. So. Yeah, I agree. Someone says that uh, Someone says that uh, Germany did a good um, job with um, with um, um, with young players, uh, young talents after two thousands. This is um, this is true. Yeah, we really had a totally awful performance in two thousand in the Euro two thousand. That was the most awful football ever that Germany played. Really terrible. I mean, we always played crap in the eighties, but um, yeah. Anyway. Um, but it really um, got better after that. Yeah, I think 1974, I mean, the Dutch team probably was the better team. It really, really, um, well, it's just, it is just um, one match in the final, right? Okay, what can we do against Mr. Flashlight here? see uh, yeah this this is kind of popular it's not really good but I don't really know how to refute it is this one of those situations where you can go g6 no <laughs> Yeah, one thing that I really um, found somewhat strange if we uh, complete the football discussion is how um, how the Dutch team played um, how the Dutch team played in the final in 2010. This this was really atrocious. I'm sorry, but um, they played um, such a an awfully unfair match against uh, against Spain. Uh, I really, uh, really hope that the Dutch team would win that, but they played such a dirty match, it was impossible to root for them. Really impossible. Um, okay, aside from football and chess, which sports do you watch? Um, hmm, I like to watch uh, 
um, track and field is I think is the I guess the, the English uh, term I didn't watch anything what happened in Beijing I, I, I simply had no time but I normally like to watch that um, Spain played a shitty match as well you say I don't well a shitty match I mean they 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 didn't really uh, I mean they played um, a physical too but I mean if you remember Nigel de Jong I mean this guy should have been banned for life for that thing that he did in the final and I didn't think he even got a yellow card for that which was kind of crazy okay so um what exactly is happening here I'm a pawn up right and d5 seems weak hmm yeah that looks nice the only thing that shouldn't happen is I shouldn't lose the pawn that would, would be a bad thing happening but the combined pressure here against d5 b2 and the long diagonal that seems a bit much I also um, in general like basketball but I didn't I don't watch it that much yeah of course I mean Robin um, could have decided the match for the Dutch team mm, yeah what 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 about this okay I'm covering that yeah so I'm going to now regroup for rook c1 check probably not playing this the best ever but um, it seems to be okay how is he not getting checkmated now I mean he can play knight b2 but well, that's kind of awful and it's checkmate actually all the same can actually pre-move rook a1 mate he did resign okay I'm going to play one more To, to be perfectly honest I kind of have a brain slip at the moment the Dutch team what did it do in 2014 right I was that losing in penalties versus Argentina I, I don't remember that that semi-final that much I probably was still kind of uh, kind of uh, mesmerized by Germany Brazil Yeah, it was. It was the hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was uh, there was a possibility of a Dutch um, Dutch German final. Yep, I requested. Yeah, yeah. I I remember it. It was a. Um, it was a really boring semi final. No, I didn't get drunk Germany against Brazil because um I was I was um at a friend and uh with my car so I couldn't couldn't uh drink anything. I'm not I'm not really um huge um into into alcohol much anyway. Um this I really I had that I had that recently, right? And I had problems. <laughs> is this any good <laughs> it looks kind of tricky yeah
Yeah, I think that's actually okay because he either has to give me that bishop now or I get active. And if he, after giving me the bishop, there's simply nothing going on. Mm, okay. Can I play for win somehow? I mean, just being equal is no problem here, but playing for a win it's, it's a different matter. Okay, I'll keep one rook on the board. Maybe this is offers some more possibilities to do something, even though, objectively speaking, um, it's certainly completely okay uh, here to, to play a draw. Okay, it's going to be six. There's a question. Who is the best football player of all time and why is it Cruyff? <laughs> That's a good question. He's probably really one of the best. It's very difficult to, to say and, and because um, also football has its, its, its context. Uh, let's say, well, you have to, if you watch those old matches, it's really a little bit of a different game. Really difficult to say. Um, yeah, this question. Do I think that the German team will win the Euros, the Euro 2016? Hmm. Not sure. They're not really. I mean, we, we, we obviously have, have a chance to do so, but there are many other teams. I mean, the European Championships is... Um, is really um, is really really strong, arguably um, stronger even than the World Championships. I mean, there's Brazil and Argentina, but nah, it's stronger. It's not stronger, but it's it's kind of comparable. Um, okay, so I'm going to. It's going to be four, huh? So let's cover that. So I can go e4 and gain even more space, but I'm not sure that it really leads to much. Mm, that's a good move probably. Nah, I probably shouldn't have done anything, but that's kind of boring. So I wanted wanted to to do something, and now he's got some chances. It was a totally, totally a nothing position to begin with. F four is that a move? Takes takes. Then he's got H four coming. Hmm, I don't know, but he's threatening H four. Let's do it. Yeah, I think the in in the in the in the football world championships or Euros, whatever the the factor of pure luck is really high. It is really high, and you really cannot do without. I mean, if you if you play well and, and you're just terribly unlucky, then uh, you won't score, you won't get anywhere. And I'm not talking about penalty kicks. I actually don't think this is all about luck. One huge factor in penalty kicks is simply the goalkeeper. And this is the reason why Germany is usually doing well there. We usually have the best goalkeeper. At least uh, in as far as I can remember, we had the best one. Or at least it was close. Yeah, speaking about goalkeeping, I would need to be a fantastic goalie to save that one. Maybe I can... Oh, well, that's a bit weird. I would have taken b6 here yeah, in a heartbeat, but okay. 
Why is England so bad in penalties? Because their goalkeepers are always crap. Really, really bad. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's probably, you have to go back to, I don't know, very, very, very uh, much back in time to find a good English goalie. That was what, David Calamity James. He was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is unfortunately a total win. Yeah, I really totally killed myself here. Yeah, I think um, penalty, penalty kicks is um, part goalkeeper. And one part is, um, I think it just helps, and this is kind of, um, it sounds a bit weird, but, but it helps if you have a successful history with it. Yeah, I mean, the, the English team, the Dutch team, they have their fair share of, of lost penalty, uh, penalty kicks, and the German team has um, only lost one penalty shooting ever, the very first one in 1976. And... Um, this means that, um, I mean, if you haven't lost one for almost 40 years, um, it will certainly help you. Yeah, you get the probably a better frame of mind than if you remember, oh, we never do good at that. Okay, <clears throat> I'm still hanging on here, which is kind of pointless. It's totally lost. Um, yeah, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think this is the case. Okay, I'm resigning that one. Let me look at this question. I started chess uh, one and a half years ago, got 1850 on leeches yesterday. Any chance of getting GMIM? More to the point, how would you try to accomplish that goal? Um, how old are you? This is important. If you are 1850, I mean, if you're really young, then maybe. So um, I'm playing Robert Hungarski here. He's got the Argentina, fl Argentina flag. That's funny. That's the final game of that session. Let's see what we get. I lost a couple of points. I don't think I played that badly, but I still lost some points. Yeah, playing too much for a win when it wasn't warranted. So you're 19. Hmm, that's a bit late. I mean, I am. Um, is is maybe doable. GM, it's a bit tough. I mean, it's also a matter of, I mean, life getting in the way. Yeah? You, you probably will invest some time on, um, on education and, uh, and um, personal relationships and, uh, I don't know, yeah, learning to drive a car or whatever. And, um, yeah, those kind of things, they, they might get in the way so difficult and I am maybe but you really have to be super super dedicated I mean I only started chess with at age 14 and uh, well if you start at 18 well it's it's not helping but it's it's doable but you really have to to do not much else than than study chess I mean skip everything else really <clears throat> Um, there's a question, is getting the GM title something comparable as getting PhD? Um, it, it depends maybe a little bit. I mean, it depends on your level of talent. I think um, a doctorate, um, I mean, uh, the PhD you can, you can get without being particularly talented in, uh, in, in something. I mean, um, I think I could, I could have easily gotten one in, in, in various subjects. Um, the GM title, I think, is more the the specific skill set is um, is it's more important that you really have some natural talent for it. Um, with uh, I mean, getting a PhD in I don't know in I don't know history or something. I studied history for some time. Um, would have been very easy for me. I mean, no big deal. You just learn stuff, learn some methods. It's easy. Um, but with chess, I think it's it seems more difficult to me. I mean, the GM title is really um, kind of difficult for me, but 
it's a matter of um, matter of talent. Uh, some other people are really um, are more gifted and uh, probably um, don't think it's it's such such a big deal. Okay, so I'm peace up here, yeah, while chatting away. Yeah, I was thinking he probably would do something like that. If he doesn't sack the knight, he probably uh, gets stomped to the ground. So um, it was kind of, it was something that definitely was on my agenda. Now I'm trying rook to h1 and sacrifice back on f4. I'm not sure if that really nets that much. It probably is equalish. Can I? Wow! What? No. That I cannot believe. You cannot do that. <laughs> Um, so bishop e2, I guess. And h7 is hanging with mate and everything. That, that's completely lost. Yep, he resigned that one, so I got a win against the GM at the end. Um, okay, so that that's it. I've, all, I've done a couple of minutes um, over time. Um... Yeah, any questions? Yeah, it really depends on your skill set. Yeah, I mean, it, it this PhD really depends a lot on what, what you study. I think in some things, in, in some uh, cases, you just need to work hard and you will get it. Yeah, you can get a PhD in, I don't know, um, how is it called? Social science or this kind of stuff, which is kind of, uh, I mean, everybody can do that if you take the time and uh, and, and, and put in the effort. Um, oh, there's a question. I cannot answer that. Uh, there's a question. Uh, in Tarn's final tournament, he escaped from hospital to play. He was the only person to defeat Kasparov on time. Yeah, that was a blitz tournament. Kasparov claimed that Tarn created too many complications for him to calculate in the time control. Do you think Kasparov let the clock run down to honor Tarn? Um, um, no, nah, I don't think so, because Rob is a very competitive guy. Um, someone says I'm uh, kind of disrespecting the social sciences. Uh, no, I'm not really. I mean, I think this is actually useful to a uh, useful useful thing to to have, yeah, to 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 learn about how people um, live together, work together, and so on. But it doesn't require any special skill set, let's say, to, to get a PhD in that. I mean, everybody can do that, basically, with um, somewhat uh, above average intelligence. Um, okay, I'm going to close this now um, and um, try to get in some, some uh, physical exercise. I know it's really late, but I need to get, get um, something, something done here. Yeah, been been sitting here all day. Okay, guys, thanks for joining the broadcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back next week, as usual. Um, I put out this announcement video, but uh, I'm on as I am every Monday. Yeah, thanks, guys. Till next time. Bye.